Welcome once again to Surviving Life. I'm Gary Dean. And I'm Joe Judkins. And we are so I was on cue this time. I didn't sit I here and look, that. look like I was a knot on a log. <laughs> Last time I was just we didn't, dog. We didn't Hey, Joe! <laughs> Speak up, buddy! Speak up, bud! Uh, let, let me tell you, I, t I took, that reminds me, I took the Dale Carnegie course ages and ages and ages ago. Yeah. I'm alive, I'm alert, I'm alive, I'm alert. That's too Well, I'm not familiar with it, with it. I'm familiar with Carnegie Hall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Well, this, it's a course we take, and, and it's, uh, it really builds you up and how to speak with people and all. Wow, ah, okay. So, we had our graduation dinner. Yeah. And we had our spouses with us. Huh? And so we were going to surprise our spouses by the very first guy on the first row is going to jump up and say, I'm alive. And then the, he's going to sit down and then the next guy would jump, jump up and say, I'm alert. I'm alive. I'm alert. I'm alive. And it would, when it came to me, and uh, <laughs> You're the, to sleep. The, the fella, I was. The fella <laughs> on the other side of my wife jumped up and said, I'm alive! And then I was supposed to say I'm alert, and I was just... <laughs> you forgot your line? I forgot my line! I, tell you, I just stood there. Oh, dumbfound. my goodness. They, oh, my They kicked you out of the Carnegie Hall. I couldn't graduate. I had to go through <laughs> class again. I'm alive. Oh. I'm not sure what I am. Oh, my goodness. But I, we, we are alive in Christ. Oh, I tell you, alive in Christ. Yeah, I wasn't then, but I am now. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you finally made it out of that alive, Joe. Hey, speaking of, of you know making it out alive. I made it back alive from uh, a very, very um, timely trip to Kentucky. Yes. Yeah. I went up to see my mom and dad. Dad's 95, mom uh, will be 95. And uh, I made it there purposefully before Veterans Day. I wanted to be there with dad on Veterans Day. Uh -huh. yeah. I had no idea that he had something that he was going to go to. But um, I had a wonderful time. I uh, spent a lot of time talking to mom, and uh, every time I go up there, they always try to give me everything. Like, you know, we're, we're going to be leaving soon, so here, take this stuff. It's mm -hmm. very emotional for me. I say, Gee, yeah. mom, stop packing. Right, right. You know, and stop packing it for me. I don't want all this stuff. I just want you to be here. I don't mm -hmm. want that stuff. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. always trying to give me everything from roll top dash to pillows. You know, I'm saying, mm -hmm. I don't have any room for it. Just let me have my time, because I'll never be able to get that back. Right, that's true. I always have stuff in mind. Mm -hmm. but when you got two wonderful parents or anybody in a relationship, that's the value. Yes, it is. Not the mundane, still life photography that's sitting mm -hmm. on somebody's desk. It's the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just it was wonderful, but. Dad came to me on the morning of Veterans Day, and I had given Dad a painting that I made. I took all of his World War II medals, and I placed them. That was in the chest? In, yeah, in, in an uh, American flag-draped chest. Yeah. Uh -huh. I had all of his medals, his ID cards, and I painted them in acrylic. I wish I could show it to you, but I, I can't. I gave it to Dad. Uh, but it's on my web page, I believe. You might be able to find it there. If not, I'll put it there soon. But it had his uh, Purple Heart. Mm -hmm. uh, his marksmanship medals, uh, his China campaign medal. Uh, that was uh, in the Battle of Sugar Loaf Hill, Okinawa, 1945. One of the bloodiest, deadliest battles in World War II. And Dad got hit with shrapnel, got his Purple Heart and came home. But uh, he survived that. The guy that died in his arms was George Dean. And Dad named me after the, his, his friend. His, his you know, friend, yeah. wrote about that in the book called The Gary Dean Story. Uh, my life and how to avoid it. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But getting back to what I was going to say uh, about Veterans Day, I went to high school in Ashland, Kentucky. Now, Ashland, Kentucky is on the Ohio River. It's the home of uh, Billy Ray Cyrus, the Judds, mm -hmm. and and me, <laughs> and a whole bunch of other people. Mm. Uh, there's somebody else. I can't think of his name. He was the um, the host of the dating game for a long time. I believe uh, that was the show, and, and several, several others. Anyway, he went to high school with my brother. Was it Chuck Woolery? What was that? Chuck Woolery? Was Chuck that? Woolery. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know how I, I don't know why you thought that. It, that was the voice of Shannon, our yeah. producer, our technical director back there. Uh, thank you, Shannon. 
uh, there'll be something a little extra in your paycheck next year. Yeah. <laughs> there'll be an envelope. Oh. Uh, nothing in it, just an envelope. Uh, Chuck Woolery went to school there, and he mm. used to be really good friends with my brother. So those are the famous people. I hadn't been back to that high school since 1969. Oh, wow. And Dad said, let's go there because the high school is having a ceremony for all the veterans. And uh, it's going to be the band and everything. Mm -hmm. the, uh, a high school assembly, all the kids will be up in the bleachers and the Tomcat. Uh, that's, that's who they were, the Tomcats, uh, in the auditorium. So they, they filled up the auditorium. And I'm sitting here thinking, this is the high school that I went to I, up to my junior year. Mm -hmm. now, I'll never forget all the times I went out that back door to skip school <laughs> <laughs> with my best friend, David Toller. David Toller was um, my brother in high school. And he got shot through the heart in Vietnam. Oh. I brought him home with a box. He was an army ranger. Mm. He was my hero. I still have his picture in my wallet. Uh, he, Talk to him every day. I mean, he's, he's just he's my bud. Uh, you don't forget people like that. Yes, yes. So when I got back into that, the flood of memories come back. And there I am sitting next to my 94 or 95 year old dad, Maureen. And they're playing the, the, all the themes of the, the, the different uh, branches of the mm -hmm. military. Mm -hmm. I stand up and they play the Air Force branch because I, you and I are both Air Force. Then they did the Marines. It's like I'm, I'm, tears are coming to my mind. My, my old man standing there it just gave me such a feeling of pride. Here's a man who fought for his country, for our freedoms, for our rights, for for our patriotic heart of mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. yes. There is the the example of what a true American hero is to me and to a lot of people. So doing that was a highlight and a, and a hallmark of my trip to Kentucky. Oh, that's wonderful. And so I just wanted, I wanted to share that with you because Veterans Day has come and gone now, but we need to honor our veterans every single day. We do. Our first responders, uh, our medical staffs, mm -hmm. the people who put themselves out there in harm's way and put themselves on the front line for you, for me, for everybody. We need to remember them, but especially people like my old man and my best friend, David Toller, those are my heroes. And you know, I know he's your dad. Yeah. But at that time, he joined to protect his country. That's right. He wasn't your dad then. No, he was an 18-year-old. In fact, he lied on his little ID card. He was born in 26. He put it in 1924 so he could get in there in time to fight for this country. Oh, my goodness. He wanted to go. And, and I had his ID card. I painted it inside the box. And mm -hmm. I put it on there, 1924. Because yeah. mm -hmm. that's what it said. That said, you got the date wrong. I said, what do you mean? It says 1924. He said, I was born in 1926. Then he told me this story. Oh, wow. I said, oh, so that's why. Mm -hmm. So it, it's cool. It was so good to see my folks. The bad part, the hard part, is to get back in the truck and leave. Yeah. But we, we stood in the kitchen and we prayed and uh, ask for safe journey. And uh, I just can't wait to go back up. It's so good, so good. So thank you for enduring that brief uh, moment of uh, very personal for me. I was really, really glad that you was able to go. The weather was uh, with you yeah. there and back. Well, you know, on the way up there, I had to go through uh, the West Virginia mountains and the Virginia mountains, and the sun was coming right at me. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened was the sun was going down. And, and it was glaring me in the face. I missed my turn and went 100 miles down the way on 81 South and had to go right back to get on the West Virginia I thought I was the only one who did that. I have, I've been making that trip since 1977, Joe. Yeah. I've never, ever missed my turn. And I missed the turn to the West Virginia turn. Oh. I ended up somewhere in Virginia going, oh my goodness. It's already a 10 hour drive. Yeah. I made it an 11 hour drive. Well, you're, you're quite a man to admit that to uh, to the world right here. Because everybody knows that Mac, that Gary missed his turn. You Boy, know. have I missed a lot of turns in, in my life. <laughs> Don't miss, you know, something very oh, big God. is about to happen in this world. Yes. Something very, very big is about to happen. You don't want to miss this. So we're going to give you a moment to think about that 
you've got a lot to talk about today and we need to get to it. Well, you, you just said something's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, that reminds me of something I was thinking on this morning right after I did my devotionals. And there is a huge remnant of believers in America. Sure. But now it's it's not a remnant that is all in in one circumference. It's pockets of remnants all over this country. Sure. And there are remnants all over this world. So there's about to be a convergence. That's right. Yeah. And and sometimes we think Am I the only one? And what does God say? I've got five yeah, thousand yeah. more, you know? Oh, my, my the, and, and what he's saying is the remnants are all over. Mm -hmm. And so people, if you are a believer and follower in Christ Jesus, you are in the remnant. And the remnant may be in your community or, or in, in your church group or, or your home home church. Or, or you may not even have that. There, there are some preachers who preach on sidewalks. Let me, let me stop you for just a second. Just because you know, we know that you hear a dog barking, yeah. it's hard not to hear that. But obviously, Timmy is stuck in the well, and Lassie can't get him out. So that's what's going on <laughs> next, next door. So bear with us. Uh, we apologize for the sound of the barking dog. But uh, what well, there's there? something going on out there. And, yeah, something's but, got his attention. It's, it's nothing bad, but it's just something no, got his attention. Got a squirrel up a tree. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what I heard squirrels are called? Squirrels. I just, I just no, no. Uh, it's from a, a country music uh, group, and I heard them say it. Squirrels are called limb chickens. I have never heard that. Limb chickens. Where'd you get that? He was on the Huckabee show. Oh, there you go. Well, there you go. Good I show. Think, yeah. Yeah, squirrels are limb chickens. I've never heard that one I've before. I've never either. heard that one. Limb chicken. Well, you know, that makes sense because if you're a country person out there in the middle of Kentucky, uh, you might be having that kind of chicken for dinner. <laughs> well, I used to uh, squ uh, hunt limb for squirrels, chicken. And, and Dad would put them in the Brunswick stew he made. Well, I've had it that way, too. Yeah. We had squirrel, uh, um, deer, bear. Uh, chicken, and you know, whatever else you can find. Yeah, I don't think you're dating No that. dog. About to be, though. Yeah. But <laughs> anyhow, the rivers. The Let's rivers, go back to that. We, the we rivers are all, all over. So if you're a believer and follower in Christ Jesus, then you are in a remnant. Regardless, you know, there may be only three or four in your remnant, or your remnant may be uh, several hundred, hundred believers. Yeah. But you are part of the overall remnant. So just keep the faith, and, and that's what I want to touch on uh, this morning. Uh, in, in the book here, uh, Receive the Baptism with the Holy Ghost, uh, one of the starting off pages, there are people who say that Jesus never said that he is God. Have you heard that? That people have said that? Yes. yes. Yeah. And there are certainly people that say he isn't. He could not possibly be. He was a good man. Yeah, but but he's not God. That's true. But then there are other people who say that nowhere in the Bible does Jesus say that he is God. Hmm. Um, oh, hmm. uh, several places I think refer to that the, the fact that he is. Well, yeah. Well, he does say he is. Yes. So let's let's take a look at two or three places here. You've seen the Father of you. Yeah. Now, what did God tell Moses? who he is before Pharaoh. What did he tell Moses to tell Pharaoh who sent him? I am. So who can say that they are I am? God. Only God can say I am. Uh -huh. Okay. So in John 8, 58, Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Right there, he said, he is God. And then in John 12, 45, Jesus said, He that seeth me, he that seeth me, seeth him, referring right. to God, right. that sent me. Now, notice the word sent me, meaning that he already existed. How can you send 
without something in existence. Mm -hmm. So Jesus already existed in right. order to be sent. Yeah. Okay. And then in John 10, 36, uh, Jesus says, I am the Son of God. Well, you're, you're, you're taking words of, of, in that sentence, I am, it could be read, I am the Son of God. But you said, emphasize it, I am. I am. Well, that's how he started off. I am, I the, am son of God. the Son of God. And then in Mark 14, 61, 62, again the high priest asked him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? I am, replied Jesus. So, Right there. And 47 times throughout Scripture, once in Daniel, 46 times in the New Testament, is the phrase, Son of God. Mm -hmm. So now, if it's that many times in the Bible, that is significant. So who does the Bible say is the Son of God? <laughs> Jesus Christ. How can, how can you get around it? And people interpret things differently to suit whatever agenda or interpretation they want to hear. How do we make that plain to them? That Jesus Christ is exactly who he said he was, is, always will be. Yes. And I was going through the internet and I saw something, uh, a site that kind of caught my eye, so I clicked on it. And it was some man who was really gifted at writing, yeah. but he was writing his own version of a Christianity religion. And and I was saying to myself, the Bible has already been written. Yeah. Why do you go to some writing by some man or woman mm -hmm. when the Bible has already been written? Why do you go to some other sources when we already have the source in the Bible? Mm -hmm. And that's just what people do follow, men or women, and what they have written. Yeah. But I want to follow the scriptures. Now, it's good to elaborate on some scriptures, but I want to see the scripture references. And then you can tell me your elaboration or your, your interpretation of it. Let's see if what you are interpreting really follows in line with the intent of the Word of God. There are a lot of uh, books. Uh, Tim LaHaye, Jerry B. Jenkins, uh, mm -hmm. the Left Behind good, series. Good authors. Good authors. Uh, excellent. But they have taken the uh, the scripture and embellished into a, a series of books mm -hmm. based on scripture. Now, I always look for the basis to to, to verify the book or the movie I'm watching, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, like the series The Chosen, like uh, uh, the greatest story ever told, mm -hmm. all those wonderful films, Ben Hur, uh, things like that especially the ones we see around Easter, are they scripturally accurate? As far as I can tell, a lot of them are. Uh, with the exception of perhaps of some of the actors and, and actresses in those films that obviously were not Middle Eastern. Right. So, yeah, they do it for uh, because they have that artistic license. But you can't take anything in the Bible and change it. And even the back of Revelation. Yeah, so you mm -hmm. don't change a single word in this scripture. Three places in the Bible it says do not change yeah. the words. Twice in Deuteronomy and once in Revelation. And somebody will argue with you, this is an interpretation. So didn't we already change what was written? No, I'll show you the words where it says do not change. So I like to refer back to the scripture. Does it refer back to the scripture? Yeah. Where? Well, now, let's, let's go to the next thing I want sure. to take a look at. I, I wrote an article, John 3.16, like never before. And this really changed me. A lot of these writings changed me. Because, as you know, I had a lot of learning problems uh -huh. uh, as I came up. And uh, I went through a lot of rejection. Lots of rejection because of my learning problems and all. And so, everything I write about are, are life hacks. How can we hack something that's going on in our life and make it a better life based on what God is looking for? Because mm -hmm. that's what I want to do. I want to be obedient. Uh, tough sometimes. I, I fail sometimes. But, but the thing about it, 
repent, uh, confess, and, Try harder. and get back up, dust yourself off, yeah. and continue heading for Jesus. You know? Absolutely. So, John 3, 16. And of course, I use the King James. Uh, there's no copyright on King James, so I can use it freely. Really? I had no idea. You had no idea? No. Yeah, there's no copyright on King James, but the other Bibles, they have copyrights. Uh, would it be the uh, NIV? The NIV, uh, New American Standard, the yeah. EBS, you know, all of those have copyrights. The story? Mm -hmm. The Messenger yeah. and all of them. Yeah, the message. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I didn't know that. Yeah. And so That and, and Lynn Chicken. I didn't know. And Lynn Chicken. We learned two two <laughs> things today, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of authors do use King James, because they don't have to ask permission. They okay. can just go ahead and use it. Makes sense. So John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, mm -hmm. that whosoever believeth uh, in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now the word that I'm going to focus on is believing. And so I went to the Merriman Webster online dictionary to look up the word believeth. Now the word believeth has a two word definition. I had no idea about that. You did. Learn something again. I'll tell you, we're good. Come on. Fast is good. You can be a test. <laughs> we'll be a test there. Oh no. Oh yeah. Uh, the word believeth has two meanings. The first meaning is firm, and the second meaning meaning is conviction. So then I looked up the words firm. Let's look at the word firm first. Firm means to make secure. It means to make fast. It means to tighten, to Tighten, like like you uh, put a screw in tight. Mm -hmm. uh, it means to make solid. It means to put into final form. It means to settle, to settle this issue. It means to firm up. It means to strengthen. It means to become firm. It means to harden one's belief in a firm manner. Hmm. And All of that is from the believeth. No, from firm. This is only the word firm. Oh, okay. See, I'm sorry, I got confused. There. Okay, I'm sorry. The word believeth has two words. There, there are two right. words. Are, so when you look up the word believeth, two words are used to explain believeth, and okay. it's firm and conviction. Okay, got so, you. So let's got look it. at each one of these words. So firm is to make secure, to make fast, to tighten, to make solid, right. to put into final form, to settle, to firm up, to strengthen, to become firm, to harden one's belief in a firm manner, mm -hmm. to recover from a decline. Now that's the one that really grabbed me because every one of us were in a decline before we met Jesus Christ. And that is actually one of the beliefs, I mean, one of the meanings of the word firm, to recover from a decline. Like that, that. Is, that is so appropriate yeah. for John 3.16 for believing. Now, the other word that believe, that uh, explains believeth is conviction. Mm -hmm. Firm conviction is what believeth means. So, firm conviction means securely or solidly fixed in place. Now, how many people who claim to be followers of Christ Jesus are solidly fixed in place? Okay. You don't have to answer that. No, I was, I was no. questioning myself yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Well, when I first started walking with Jesus, I, yeah. Because it's a journey. Sure it is. It's a journey. Yeah, it is. And it's a journey that I'm still on. Amen. All right. Then the next part is not weak or uncertain, vigorous. So how many of us are vigorous in our conviction of the word believing of John 3.16? Wow. And then next, having a solid or compact structure that resists stress or pressure. So can you answer someone 
who is attacking your theological belief and your belief in Jesus? You're asking I'm me? I'm asking you. Yeah, can you? Of course I can. You can. All right. There are some people who can. But this is this is one of the beliefs is, yeah. I mean, one of the definitions is having a solid or compact structure yeah. uh, to resist stress or pressure. No. Yeah. See, my feet are firmly on the ground on that one. You can't sway me from that. And I have, people have tried. Well, you have written a book to substantiate mm -hmm. your belief. And and that's that is that's a powerful book you've written. Thank I you. really like it. Wouldn't right. be here with that book if it was not for you. Well, because you uh, you've got this published for me, so cannot thank you enough on that one. Well, you're welcome, but it's uh, it all goes to the Lord. Well, amen. And and, amen. and that leads me. To, Every chapter says so. Yeah. And, and uh, there's just two or three more here. Sure. But I want to touch on something. We hear people who become very sick, and they give the doctor all the glory mm -hmm. but now let's look at him a lot of credit let, look, we give him credit because God had his hands on him God made him or her mm -hmm. with the brain in mind to absorb that medical information to do that job I thank God for the doctor yeah we've got to go all the way up to the top yeah. and thank God for how he used people mm -hmm. to help make us well sure and you've been personally through something like that. On several locations. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and continuing. We all have. Yeah. yeah. And continuing. Not subject to change or revision. Steady. Steadfast. You're, you're not going to revise your belief in no. Christ Jesus. Absolutely. I'm not either. Amen. Next. Not easily moved or disturbed. Steadfast. Amen. And that's you. Yes, sir. Well founded. It's the next one. Hmm. You are well founded. Now I was well lost for a you're long time. You're well lost, <laughs> but now you're well, yeah, well founded. founded. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That well I know. Hmm. Okay, and the last one: indicating firmness or resolution. Indicating. Now that shows action. Mm -hmm. That's an action word. Indicating. Right. That's not standing in the corner. That's right. And uh, you didn't stand in the corner with when you got your book published. No, sir. No, sir. So, again, all of that out of that represents the, no, represent the, the one, one word. Just the one word. The one word. Believe it. Yeah, believe it. And believe that's, it. That's, that changed me when I did this study yeah. and wrote this. And it made me even question yeah. where did I stand? You know, was I in the background? Was, was I on the back pew or was I standing... Or was I sitting on the floor behind the back pew? Is it you know? bad to just accept everything on faith without question? <clears throat> because what you've done there is not not question, but broke it down to, to where it makes even more sense to you. In a way, that's kind of questioning it. What is this word believe and believeth? And you, and you described every element of that word. So you kind of questioned it in the process. Because you questioned yourself. Where was your belief? Were you standing still or were you active in it? Were you going forward with it? Well, I don't know. It was if I, well, the Lord led me to do that. Okay. But why he led me to the word believeth, yeah. I, I don't remember. But I think, because I've been on this journey of trying to get people not to focus on call itself, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. The word Christian only appears three times in Scripture. Mm -hmm. But over 200 times faith. Sure. And over 300 times believe. Mm -hmm. And it's subsidiaries. Yeah. So, I want to be able to say that I am a faith believer in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. because he was crucified for my sins, laid in a tomb, raised from the dead on the third day, walked for 40 days talking and ministering to followers and on that 40th you saw him yeah who said saw him. that's right that's right on that 40th day mm -hmm. he ascended up in front of more than 500 people right. to the right hand of the father mm -hmm. and i tell you what a lot of people say yeah i believe in jesus yeah but personally i want to go through that full gamut 
of what Jesus has done to me, what he did, and why I believe in him. Yeah. Because he's alive. Amen. Before we close things out, I want to give a shout out to uh, everybody at Poplar Church of Christ um, up towards Williamston. I can't think of the, the exact town because it's like out in the cotton field area of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. You go to Little Washington and Boca County and you go up towards uh, Williamston. And, and that's where I got lost on my trip back from Virginia. Well, so I missed alone. my I missed my turn off. Yeah, and you I too. Went, I went thirty miles down the road. You dog down on sixty four <laughs> west. Went thirty miles down there, yeah. and I said, "Where in the world am I?" And I pulled yeah. off the side of the road, flagged down a truck coming to me. <laughs> Where and, am I? And it was an old farmer and yeah. maybe his grandson. Uh -huh. And I know they probably thought I was crazy. Oh, I know you I know? do. Yeah, but they were so nice to me yeah. and told me what I needed to do. <laughs> get and, a map. And, yeah, get a map. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, but, that's but, funny. That's funny. Well, I'm glad you made it back. And I did too. I used my phone GPS so mm -hmm. I wouldn't get lost. You might want to try that no. next time. <laughs> yeah, just plug in the, uh, the well, uh, address. Yeah. yeah right. But I found my way there. It was the women's conference, and there were like over a hundred women. You saw some of the pictures yes. I put out mm -hmm. there. Um, so they said, well, you got a surprise person for you to, that's going to introduce you as one of our speakers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know who that would be. I'm sitting in the front pew waiting to be uh, introduced, and uh, this beautiful, beautiful woman of color sits down next to me, and it's Lynette Taylor who uh, was the uh, former anchor of WITN, Channel 7. But when I worked at Channel 7 as anchor, she came on board as associate producer. She was a young kid out of college and just learning the business. And uh, she was writing scripts for me. So that's how, uh, how I knew her. And then, uh, of course, I left. She was elevated into uh, reporter status and then anchor status, and she did a wonderful job. And she was going to be the one to introduce me. And she said some of the nicest things anyone has ever said to me in my entire life. Oh, wow. I had never been so honored. Uh, and you never know who you inspire. Oh, true, true. As you go through life. And you be careful who you meet. Mm -hmm. Say the things that you want them to remember, mm -hmm. and not things you want them to yes. forget. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Apparently, uh, I had an impression on her, and uh, she just said remarkable things uh, about our association uh, in broadcasting, on the air, off the air, uh, writing scripts, and working together, and I'll never forget it. I, I hope they'll send me a transcript or a, a copy of the tape they were recording that day. Uh, her words were more eloquent than mine, mm -hmm. but I had a fun time. There were wonderful people, and I thank each and every one of you. Uh, for inviting me to your church. I hope you'll invite me back. I told him I was going to go back and just, just come sit in the pew. Mm -hmm. And I did make the statement while I was there. I said, you know, you go to a, a rock concert and everybody spends the top dollar to sit in the front seats. Mm -hmm. I said, why is it when you go to church for free that you all sit in the back? <laughs> all of a sudden, <laughs> all the women, did they really? They all moved up a couple of pews. I'm thinking, okay, that, I like that. Yeah. I'm going to use that again. Okay, that's yeah. good. So, thank that's you so good. much for having me up there. And, uh, uh, anytime, if, if you need anything from this this humble servant of Christ, please call on me. So and one other note, uh, we have a poster board that we're working on yeah. uh, to put right here. A little ID, a little identification. Identification for the websites where you can, where you can go to. Uh, I didn't realize it until this Monday, a couple of days ago, yeah. that my website was down. And I had no idea. I happened to go to it for some yeah. reason, and I couldn't get to it. Yeah. So I had to go in there and try to figure out what. We need to get Shannon on uh, working on this thing because he's the expert. Well, I got, I got it. I he's, know you're an expert too. He, he's, too, he's busy. What well, I can get it done, but Shannon is like lightning. He is so smart. He's a transformer. Know? You know that. Yeah, he thought he'd go. He's <laughs> Anyway, Gary Dean's story is available Amazon.com, Walmart.com, and on. Uh, uh, if you if you get out, get in touch with me on Facebook. I'll send you a signed copy. And uh, of course, you if you're watching the video, then you know where it is on YouTube. But our YouTube channel 
is Surviving Life 24, the Joe Judkins and Gary Dean show. You know, I have to put all that in there, but it's Surviving yeah, Life yeah, 24. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No song and dance. Yeah, yeah. No. Surviving Life 24, 24 hours a day. Because like I told a fellow the other day, why'd you put 24 on it? I said, because we got to survive life while we're dreaming. You know, Amen. <laughs> we, we want some nice, sweet dreams. We do, and we want to wake up. That's right. We want and to we wake thank up. thank God every time we do. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. Come back next week. We'll have another episode, or get on the websites and watch the ones you missed. There you go. We'll see you, folks. God bless you. Be blessed.